Hi, I'm Professor Nesheba, and I am uh, here to tell you a little bit uh, about um, this question, which is, why is UTV that quantity, uh, why do we get to call it CV? Let me explain. So, CV is supposed to be um, what we call a heat capacity. Um, the little subscript V means we're thinking about a heat capacity uh, uh, that happens um, when we when we try to heat up a system but uh, maintain its volume constant. And a constant volume, uh, we use this word isochoric. So the isochoric heat capacity is CV. Let me give you uh, an example. I'm just imagining I'm going to add a little bit of heat to this system, which starts off at some temperature, but because heat goes in, the temperature uh, goes up. and um, well, you can imagine that as long uh, that, that there should be some proportionality there, that the amount of heat that goes in should result in a proportional uh, temperature increase. And that's what this equation expresses, okay? We say the amount that heat goes in is proportional to the amount uh, that the temperature went up. So, for example, if I put 210 joules into uh, my system over there, and I saw that the temperature went up, the change in temperature was, was 10 Kelvin, uh, then I would uh, use that equation and say, well, um, oh, I can solve that. Uh, that means that CV must be equal to 21, and the units are, are going to be um, joules per Kelvin. Okay, so that would be the heat capacity of that system uh, that we determined from, from that experiment at some particular temperature. Okay, so that's the heat capacity. What does this have to do with these geometric pictures of the u as a, as a, as a state function? Well, what we uh, have argued before is that the, that the slope of the u in a state space of temperature and volume, the slope there uh, in, the, in the temperature direction, we, uh, we gave it um, a, a name, we called it CV, but formally we would say that that slope and that temperature direction is partial view with respect to temperature holding the volume constant. Okay, so that's that's C V that we're calling it C V. The big question is, you know, how do I know that that's the same C V that we got over here? Okay? Well, how are we going to go about that? We have two really great equations. One of them is the differential equation of state. And uh, this, uh, you know, just describes the slope in, in, in this graph. Remember, that slope is pi sub t. And the idea was that any uh, change in temperature or in volume can be used to calculate the change in the internal energy just by using those coefficients, Cb and pi sub t. Okay, that's the differential equation of state. And now, um, in this particular case, since I'm imagining an isochoric heating, I'm not changing the volume at all, so I get to throw away that term. So we just have that left, according to the differential equation of state. Another good um, key equation here is the first law in differential form. That would be the amount of heat that goes in is, uh, sorry, the amount of energy that, uh, that, the, that the system changes um, must be equal to dq, the heat that goes in and the work that's done. Again, since this is an isochoric process, there's no change in the volume. So the work must be zero, and I have du is equal to dq. Now I'm looking at these two equations. This is equal to that, this is equal to that, the same thing. So um, I think I can pretty readily solve this to say that dq must be equal to c v dt. Okay, that's what those two equations put together say, and that's of course exactly the same thing that we, we started off by uh, when we uh, defined what the heat capacity um, is. And uh, so that's how we know that UVT, uh, UTV is the same as is legitimately called the, the, the isochoric heat capacity.